These are the stories. My little girl, she's changing lives just by being herself. Of organizations and people making a difference. When you first tell someone about adaptive wheelchair boxing, it doesn't sound real. And empowering others. It saved my life. It saved my life. Across Canada. I scored my first goal in my first blind hockey game. In our community. My passion in life is swimming, uh, swimming in the ocean and the lakes and rivers and in swimming pools, anywhere I can find pretty much. Stepping into the calm ocean on a gray morning, Susan adjusts her swim gear and dips into the water. Her passion for swimming came in an unexpected way as a multiple sclerosis diagnosis led her to the water after struggling for a decade with the disease. In the years since she first started swimming, her journey as an athlete has transformed not only her own life, but has inspired her to help others with disabilities experience the same freedom. So my name is Susan Simmons, and I'm here in the gymnasium of Emmanuel Baptist Church in Victoria. I'm an ultramarathon swimmer with multiple sclerosis. I also have a full-time job. I work for the province as a public servant. When I was about 30 years old, I was diagnosed with MS. I became visually impaired in one of my eyes. I went blind temporarily. The doctors, they said not to do anything that would stress my body out because they were worried it would cause an attack. So they didn't want me overexerting myself. Uh, but 10 years into the disease, it was hard for me to walk a block and I knew I needed to do something. So I started swimming and I've been swimming ever since. When I first started swimming, I started swimming in a pool and I would swim about 20 lengths each time and I'd go home and I would need a two hour nap. Uh, and every day I would try to add a little bit to it and over time kept adding more and more and then eventually jumped in the open water and my first open water swim was 1.5 kilometers and my longest one about five or six years later was 70 kilometers. Most of the people around me in the pool were very supportive. They thought what I was doing was wonderful. And as people got to know me more, more and more people jumped in to help me. Some people have been naysayers around the bigger swims that I do. They're not crazy about me swimming in the ocean or swimming across channels and things like that, or they think I might not be able to do it. I know for my own disability, when I was diagnosed with MS, the immediate reaction that I felt when the doctor said, go home, don't exercise, call me if you need me kind of thing, Leave, you know, I, I felt I was abandoned and that the world had given up on me. And I thought, this is such a horrible feeling. I don't want this to happen to anybody else. So it was kind of at that point that I thought, I want to make it my mission. I'm trying to share with other people that have disabilities the same journey, where just because you have a disability doesn't mean that you can't do things. Like, go out, if you want to do something, try it, challenge yourself. Don't tell somebody they can't do something. Say, how can I help? On the shores of Gyro Beach in Victoria, BC, a group of swimmers warm up along the shore. These are the Spirit Orcas, a group of athletes Susan has brought together to swim, achieve goals, and gain confidence as a collective. What I want us to do is grab a spot, set your gear up so your towel is ready for when you get out, and just kind of hang out by that log while I get, we all get ready to go in together, okay? Uh, I was coaching Special Olympics in Victoria. There was a team of about 60 athletes, and when I started coaching, I thought, this is great. Like, these guys are competing, they love it, but I found we weren't challenging them enough. So we now have the Spirit Orcas who are eight swimmers. We swim uh, mostly in Juan de Fuca Street, which is really cold. Uh, we, do, we don't think about it, we just jump in. <laughs> you can't think about cold water when you're getting into it, you just gotta jump in. So I usually take the lead for safety reasons. And um, I think because they want so badly to just achieve these wonderful things, uh, they're, they're willing to get in and, and say, hey, look, I can do it too. So they, they motivate themselves. 
All right, you guys ready? Yep. Okay, Kalia, let's do it. You have five seconds. Alright, let's go dogs! Every Saturday the spirit orcas try to do an open water swim, even in the winter or spring and fall. Once everybody's ready, we go in and uh, basically try to last as long as we can. There's a little bit of swimming, a little bit of wading around, and we, we do a bit of both. Um, if, if I can get them swimming with their face in the water when it's cold, that's great. If you all have the courage or a chicken muscle, you're, you're building that courage muscle every time you get in the water. I'm, I'm happy to have Drew, Dixon, Cheyenne, Lydia, and Ali back. And Malia too. And Malia. I'm happy to have all the spirit orcas back. I want to make it my mission to make sure that everybody knows that they're worth something, that they're valued. And the way that I do that is through swimming, getting people to jump in the water with me or do a workout with me and achieve something that they couldn't possibly have thought they could ever do. Our community will return after the break. We now return to our community. Hi, my name is Ben Van Lerup. I'm here at the downtown YMCA, where I usually swim every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, four days a week. I have Moto with me. Moto is a rubber ducky. He's all yellow. I was part of the Special Olympics swim team since I first met Susan. She's an important soul for me. My favorite part about being with Susan is we have fun together. She's been challenging me to a lot of things. Swimming really helps me to become more active and more creative and more powerful, and it gives me more energy. So I'm Christina Van Lira. I'm Ben Van Lira's mom, and uh, we're in Langford in my living room in Victoria, BC. Ever since Ben was small, water was his thing. That was seemed to be the only thing that calmed him down. He was a very active uh, young boy who didn't speak till he was about five. Ben and Susan have a very amazing connection. She has a way of challenging Ben, but at the same time um, encouraging him and nurturing him. Susan has a great way of being both a coach, a mentor, and a friend to Ben. And I love how she knows when it's the right time for each one of those situations with him. Ben has several different passions, which is really cool. Keeps him very busy. He loves to write songs, um, loves to perform. Ben has a unique way of whatever he sees in the world, he'll put into song or write. So I think the creative side um, really has helped Ben a lot, as well as the swimming. The swimming has been a physical outlet, the social, and I think the songwriting has really been a great way to process life. I wish I could do that, <laughs> right? But if you were to ask Ben what he loves the most though, I think he would say marble works. He loves to create massive, complicated towers out of something called marble works with marbles, and it's a massive de-stressor for him and very creative. On a sunny day in Saanichton, BC, Ben heads into his job at a local tortilla shop, Adriana's, where he heads into the bright kitchen to start prepping burritos with his co-workers. Thank you very much, Luca. My name is Adriana Ramirez, 
and I'm the co-owner of Adriana's The Whole Enchilada in Victoria. Working with Ben has been a very good experience for us. Since uh, Ben started working after he graduated from high school, I enjoy working at Adriana's. They really helped me be to become a better cook and a, and a better man. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. I'm going to work with a smile today. You always work with a smile, Ben. When Ben was younger, especially in high school, he loved the culinary arts, he loved baking. It was really reinforcing for him. I think a natural talent. But he's so good measuring the ingredients, and he goes so fast. I mean, he looks like a machine for me. There we go. So many of us are amazed at Ben's ability to just embrace life, to be independent, have a job. But above that, so many of us go, man, I want to live Ben's life, <laughs> right? He just gets such incredible opportunity to do things and embraces it and just goes all out. We all work together as a team, and teamwork really makes it perfect. Back outside of Gyro Beach, we're introduced to the smiling faces of the rest of the spirit orcas, including Allie, looking ready to swim in her suits and cap. Stepping through the halls of a daycare adorned with cubbies and colorful paintings, Allie tells us how she came to be part of the group. Mm, my name is Allie White, and we are in the daycare at Emmanuel Baptist Church. This is my friend Bristol, and when I get really anxious, he is my voice. He's a cute little polar bear with two paws and ears, and he's very, very soft. I am a daycare teacher, and I play with little friends, and I do circles sometimes, and I do the art. I'm putting out green and yellow paper, construction paper, for the kids to do on Monday. I think my favorite part is uh, having the kids say I love you. Hello, my name is Ingrid White. I'm associate pastor at Emmanuel Baptist Church in Victoria, BC, and we are currently in the sanctuary here. And I'm the mom of two spirit orcas, Allie and Lydia. We met Susan Simmons through Special Olympics, and Allie was one of the stronger swimmers within the program in Victoria and Susan invited Allie to come and swim with her. And then over the next little while, there were several other swimmers that Susan challenged to be involved in um, open water swimming, either in the lakes or in the oceans here in Victoria. I think one of the things that the Spirit Orcas um, group has done for each of the athletes, and I know for Allie in particular, is it's helped have confidence that they are capable not just with swimming, but in whatever endeavor they pursue, whether that be her work as an ECEA in our daycare, it's an early child educational assistant, or whether it be any other aspect of her life, it's, it's helped her to be willing to try new things and to stretch herself, I think, a bit more. Susan sees the ability in persons and not their disability. She sees uh, the potential in individuals, and she saw in Allie perseverance, and I think she saw in Allie a willingness to work hard to work towards a goal. When I've had kind of like a tough day and I'm at kind of at the end of myself and then I go to the Y and I see Susan and she just, it's kind of like I can let everything go. I feel really safe around her um, and that's a big one for me. All right. Because for me, I go through every day with anxiety, and to have Susan there, it's like, okay, I can just let go and just, just swim. Susan has enabled them to see that they have potential within them that they might not have recognized before. And so for Susan to come alongside and give her this amazing skill of long distance swimming has been just a, a blessing, a real blessing. I think it's also nice to be like a part of something and it also gives me 
a focus on what can I do for someone else. Our community will return after the break. We now return to our community. Outside of Susan's apartment in Victoria, BC, she leaves with a bag full of swimming gear to head to the YMCA to train with some of the other spirit orcas. As she heads into the Y and towards the pool, she's greeted by Ben, Allie, and the newest member of the spirit orcas, Malia. Ben, already in the water, strides confidently through the pool with his trusty sidekick, Moto, the rubber ducky. So tonight we're doing our, our Friday night workout. It's about 45 minutes. Tell me when, Moto. Ready? Wait. Start with the warm up. We're swimming in a 25 meter pool, so they just go back and forth, usually swimming freestyle. So focus on improving our stroke technique. And then after that, uh, we'll have some fun and we're gonna do some sprints. Tonight, we decided we would do butterfly, which is the hardest of the strokes. But we find it's a really good way to build strength for our open water swimming. We don't wanna go up, we wanna go forward. Yeah. And not going deep. Not going too deep. You want to manage that kick, so not a big undulation. Back in the ocean, Susan and her partner paddle in a kayak, coaching the spirit orcas through an open water swim through the Juan de Fuca Strait. Hey, we got Allie White getting in the water now. Here she goes. You're going to be great, Allie. Have a lovely swim. They've achieved some amazing things as individuals and as a team. Okay, and off she goes. They've swam in the Great Bear Rainforest near Bella Bella. I'm the king of the ocean. There you go. Three, two, one. Yeah! Something that I like to do with them when we're doing any of our swims is we plan collaboratively. So they're a big part of the planning process. If we're going to travel, they're helping me figure out how are we going to get to Great Bear, what time is the ferry. Like every single detail, they're involved in the planning of that. So that, too, you start seeing all these life skills that some may or may not have had. The open water swims are a full-fledged family affair, with supporters of these spirit orcas cheering on their loved ones from kayaks and boats as they swim across the open ocean. Got Ben in the water, his mom. Ben and his mommy. <laughs> My favorite part about swimming is meeting up with the dolphins, meeting up with the whales and uh, other sea creatures who live under the sea. This year, the spirit orcas swam from Brentwood Bay all the way to a place called Colwood over eight weeks. Uh, it was an 80 kilometer swim. So some of the athletes swam 10 kilometers, some of them swam 15 at a time. Uh, others swam two or three, depending on what their levels were. Like for me, it was really special um, because it was at the end, it was just Susan and I. All I had to do was just look at Susan and just be like, okay, we can do this together. They rose to the challenge and embraced it and did everything they needed to do to get through it. Class in the BC Ferries building in Sydney, Sports Bay. With the Spirit Orgas, I think I'm most proud of what I can do in the water, but also I think I'm most proud of myself that I can be a part of something. The biggest change is a sense of confidence that they didn't have before in themselves, and that's coming from self-worth. There's a lot of pride. They know that what they're doing is what other people aren't doing. Uh, it is not common to swim an 80-kilometer swim in eight weeks. Uh, this is quite an achievement. I've never had a doubt that any of them couldn't do any of this. It's always been, let's, let's just go do it, and, and they do. Back outside the Victoria YMCA, Susan heads to her car and travels to her local church, where she hosts a virtual meeting over Zoom with the rest of the Spirit Orcas and a few other friendly faces. Yeah, you guys see, Ali's going to be with us tonight. Ah, oh, she's hiding. <laughs> the Zoom room stuff that I'm doing right now, after coaching Special Olympic athletes, I've come to learn that 
You know, the social aspect to life for them is so important. And when COVID hit, I knew they wouldn't be able to do that. And I thought, well, this, this is not going to end well. Like, we need to create a space where they can at least connect. My way of doing that was to create a Zoom room where they would come together every night of the week for about an hour to exercise. Hello, full house. Hey guys, how's it going? Good. You guys are all good? Are you? <laughs> is everybody ready for a workout? Yeah. Okay. Can you guys see us okay? You're going to start with your weight. And we're going to go for a walk. During that time, like as part of that, they would have a way to connect with one another. So the social was the hook to keep them fit. A few more. What's come out of that is that the social has been even more important than the fitness aspect. I had a funny mind big Joe. <laughs> Hi, William. Hello, William. I think because they all love to be with Susan and because she uplifts them, you know, with just her demeanor and her encouragement. And so that is always a big plus is when they can interact with Susan and to have Susan swim alongside them. Um, you know, they're, they're together with her in the water, and that makes a huge difference. By challenging people, they're achieving these wonderful things, and I get to be a part of that. So I'm really proud of them, and I am so appreciative that they've allowed me in their lives when they're doing these great, amazing things. I appreciate all the Spirit Orcas team for my help. No matter who you are, what you look like, go out there and try. And if you need a friend, go grab a friend. They're family to me. The Spirit Orcas are family. This is a group of people who uh, love unconditionally. Um, it doesn't matter to them that I have MS. Uh, they, they're just people that love swimming and we all love hanging out together and helping each other be better people. And to me, that's what it's all about. Let's just make each other better people. Producer, director, Mike Waverkan. Writer, Jessica Rivers. Interviewer, production manager, Sam Graham. Director of photography, Luke Connor. Underwater camera, John Roney. Location audio, Daniel Taggart Hodge. Editor, Alec Richardson. Sound mix, David Parfit. Integrated described video specialist, Simone Cupid. Narrator, Jim Van Horn. Graphics, Andrew Antonello. Content Development Specialist, Sylvie Fiquette. Coordinating Producer, Jennifer Johnson. Director Production, Kara Nye. Director Programming, Brian Perdue. VP Content Development and Programming, John Melville. President and CEO, David Arrington. Copyright 2021, Accessible Media, Inc.